Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at modeling some ceilings. So this came up, we did a, a, a video a couple weeks ago about making ceiling plans inside of layout, and that was for like vaulted ceilings on, uh, on roofs and that kind of thing. But the question came, well, how do we frame down ceilings? How do we model ceilings that come down um, like you'd see in a basement or, or something like that? How do we go about that process? And I figured, well, let's do that. Let's, let's, let's answer that question by, by doing it. Let's, in fact, let's do it right now. Let's stop talking. Go. All right. So I have a very, very simple room here. This is just a little little pretend basement room and I got some duct work or some steel beams or whatever. There's stuff up here that drops. Uh, the assumption is of course that there's another floor, you know, up above this. And, and this is the place we're in. So I didn't have that in there because I like being able to look down from above, but in this situation, how would we come in and just frame down so that we're underneath here? Um, I'm going to get rid of this cause I don't, I don't need to see that. So, Really, I want to, what I want to look at is, okay, if I drop a line down, I'm going to hold down the shift to lock that. So this is about 10 inches. So I'm going to say I want to drop down at least 12 inches to frame some kind of a ceiling here. There's a couple options of what we could do. We could actually do something that is framed down. So as long as there's like, you know, an inch and a half for some flat two by members and then a half inch of drywall. So if I come down, if I came down 12 inches, I could actually do that pretty easy. So this could be as simple as this. I could come down 12 inches, type 12, enter. And then from there, I could just kind of come across here, across here, across here. And you know what, with that, if we're looking for the MVP, the minimum viable product, the least possible work, that would work, right? That gives us uh, a ceiling plane. I'd probably want to grab this group it. Um, I'm going to go into my tags and, and make some stuff. I'm going to put in a few ceiling layers. Ceiling one. And then, whoops, I didn't hit enter. Ceiling one, enter. Ceiling two, enter. And we'll do a third one and we'll call this one ceiling five. Ah, kidding. Ceiling three. Okay. So I'm going to take this minimum ceiling and we're just going to assign that to ceiling one. And then I can turn that off like that. So that works. That's not a bad solution. That is that that's going to be, you know, that could be how I put that in. Um, let's look at some other options. So let's say I do want to frame it down. Maybe I want to put some volume in or like recess some lighting. This this stuff right here does cause an issue for me. Obviously, I can't frame into where this beam or the HVAC is, but I could create a volume that I can play in a little bit by doing something more like this. So if I come in here and I'm just gonna draw an edge across, I'm gonna come down 12 inches, same, same depth for the ceiling, 12 inches and go like that. And then I could push this back here like this. What this gives us is rather than just that one plane, this gives us a volume, right? So we could actually do some stuff inside of here. So if I wanted to, I could come in and do something like, um, you know, I'm gonna put a rectangle like that and then push that maybe all the way up to the top or we'll go, we'll go up like 11.5. There we go. And I could give myself that little recess, right? So I could, I could actually have a little vault, a little higher space up there. And to take that a little bit further as well, I could even grab this I'm going to bring this down like eight inches, select and delete that. And then we'll pull these out like, I don't know, three inches, something like that. And what that will do, that gives me just a little, you know, like a little lighting recess. So I could in that volume, I could actually have, you know, I, it wouldn't sketch up doesn't place lights, but I could go into my render or something, put a, put a, a, a lighting, a light across those spots, which would put light up into that recess and kind of make that section glow. But pretty easy to do. One of the things I might want to do if I'm playing with this, I arbitrarily drew a rectangle, but obviously I'd want to be more 
if I want to be more specific, I could work in x-ray mode too, because then I can actually see how close am I to this. So if I'm framing down and if I want to get the most possible volume, I could take, you know, these two pieces and just pull them this direction a little bit closer there. So same thing here, grab that, slide it back like that. And this is giving me my biggest possible uh, space right there. That one actually, no, oh, it actually didn't click to it. So turn X-ray off. There we go. I got my biggest possible space. I might, maybe want to give myself a little, another couple of inches or something like this. Like bring this another three inches out. A little, little more space for lighting in that ledge. And uh, with that, obviously I didn't frame that. We didn't go in and figure out exactly how it's going to go together. But um, the general idea, I think, should make sense there. And the fact that this volume covers up the other materials, that's fine. That doesn't, that doesn't hurt anything. Uh, it just gives us more space to, to kind of work in there. So I'm going to go ahead and make that a group and assign that to ceiling two. Now, there is one other, uh, <laughs> one other thing we want to look at. Uh, it's not the most popular, but it does happen a lot. And if you're creating an existing space, you may have to mess with a drop ceiling. So if I was doing a drop ceiling, here's what I would do. Um, I come in with a rectangle, draw it 24 by 48, because that's a, a standard size of a, re a ceiling, uh, drop ceiling acoustical tile. Um, and let's see, we'll get that like a half inch. I actually don't know how one inch. I don't know. I don't know exactly how. No, that's not right either. Three quarters of an inch. I don't know. Now I'm, now I'm messing with details that don't really matter that much. All right, I'm going to take that and make it a component. Um, I'm just going to call it my tile. I'm going to take that and we're going to stick it right here and then pull it down 12 inches, get us to that same ceiling height we had before. All right, now I'm gonna take that piece option, copy this way, and then I'll say, I don't know, four times, all right? And then we'll grab that whole run right there, take it, option copy over here, and then we'll go do that, I don't know, 12 times. Did that nail it? Ah, oh, it's close. <laughs> I was like, you're not going to believe I'm winging this if I get the guess right both directions. All right. So there, that gives us our tiles. Now, in some cases, that might be good. I might be like, yeah, cool. That's fine. Um, but anybody who's done or dealt with this knows that there's an important piece missing, and that's the track that those acoustic tiles sit in. So I may want to, I say may because this, again, is is all about level of detail. What is the appropriate level of detail? Um, and of course, you're going to want to model the level of detail that makes sense for your model. So I'm going to draw this little little one inch by an eighth of an inch rectangle. I'm going to extend it all the way down to the opposite wall. I'm going to grab that, make that into a component. Actually, I'm not going to make it a component. I'm just going to make it a group. I don't need to, uh, ooh, I got a, I got an issue with my clicking. All right, there we go, All right, make a group. I'm not gonna repeat this, or it's gonna repeat, but not, there's no reason to sync them together. So do that and then say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight X. That gives me half my grid. The other pieces, so I do need pieces around the edge. So I'm gonna come in here come over half an inch or actually we'll say one inch this way too and then same thing I'll drop down actually you know what? why am I doing that let's just let's just do this take this and we'll just option copy this over here same thing on the end this is a little different because this is a full piece Uh, so my spacing is a little off, right? Cause this is now a half inch smaller than, than one inch, but still works. All right. And then I need some going this way. So same thing. I'm going to start, I flipped upside down here. I'm going to come this way. 0.5. I could try to 
grab uh, an existing piece and scale it and make it work the right right you know size and everything but for me just drawing that rectangle and push pulling it real quick is a way quicker easier way to do that I know it's a little brute force but still all right I'm gonna make a group there and then I'm going to say option copy this way and that is 3x I'm gonna grab all of those and we're gonna go here here, 8x, there we go. And then this last row, I'm gonna grab all of these. And I'm gonna scale them. Now I'm gonna turn on x-ray to see inside of here, and then I can go to zoom in kind of tight. There it is, I'm just gonna pull that out to here. Now it's scaled the right size, turn x-ray off. And now, before I do anything else, while it's still selected, I'm just going to hit move, and that's going to let me option copy that right over to this right here, because these are shorter too. And then the last thing I have to do is grab a row of those. Actually, the way this would work would be I would have one more of uh, these. So let's go. Oops, let's go vertical. I'm going to take this piece, option, rotate it this way. That runs this way. And then these, actually, what will happen is all of these pieces, if we're trying to get it right, look, look as right as possible without overlapping geometry. I hate when geometry just slightly overlaps and causes issues. So if I look down here, it's exactly what I got going on. See that? So I'm going to hit scale. I'm going to turn x-ray on again so I can see inside the wall. And I'm just going to grab that middle handle that so it hits the face of this other whoops oh I got kind of crazy with my zoom I apologize I wouldn't make anybody sick there all right and I'm just gonna pull that back to I'm having a hard time getting that there we go and with that we have our third type of ceiling, which we can also grab. I don't need the ceiling stuff. Uh, make that into a new group. Assign that group to ceiling three. And there we go. With that, we got a drop ceiling, frame down ceiling with a lighting nook. I don't know what that's actually called, but a vaulted or a, a tray ceiling raised up ceiling there, or super simple, just a face. Any of them work? And uh, here you go, see how easy that, quick and easy it is to actually just put one of those in there. Um, yeah, I know it's, it's kind of, when you think about it, it's pretty basic modeling. Nothing I did there was like exceptional or difficult or anything like that, but there is something inherently uh, challenging about modeling a thing from underneath. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because you flip it over and it looks backwards. I, I don't know what it is, but I maybe I'm just talking for myself too. I used to struggle with modeling ceilings because it was always like I had to stop and just think like reverse. I don't know. Maybe I'm making it more difficult than I have to, but really it's pretty simple to model that geometry. It's really a question of the right level of detail you need for the job you're doing and the right geometry and organizing. Um, pretty simple grouping, pretty, pretty simple tagging, and uh, you can have some options in just a couple of minutes. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, leave us a comment down below. Uh, did you like that? Do you have to model like that? Did I miss something? Is there a thing that I should have done differently? Or do you have an idea for a video, something that we have never showed before? Let us know down in the comments. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.